Hello, my name is Horion Gracie. With the increased popularity of our self-defense system, the time has come for us to introduce the first series on the basics of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. I feel confident that the simple techniques that you will learn on these videos will increase your effectiveness on self-defense. In this first tape, I will address how to close the distance between you and your opponent, also known as the clinch. This is where grappling starts. I will also show you some basic takedowns and how to stabilize your position once you get on top of the opponent. In this first segment, we'll see how to close the distance between you and your opponent. Several ways to do that, and I'm gonna use my brother Hoist so we can exemplify that. Assuming that your opponent is standing like this, what you wanna do is that you wanna use the kick First of all, you want to use the kick so that you can close the distance and then come in like that. Once again, please. So they can go one, two, three. That's the idea. The kick, it's a safe way to bring you close to him because if he wants to use a kick from him or whatever, you just can cover that distance and then you come in with this to get to this point. Another thing is if he throws a punch with this hand, you can deflect the hand and come in close. This hand of mine will deflect his hand, and then I come in from underneath like that. If he throws a punch with that hand, you can go under and block him by the waist. And go under the hand. Mainly, you want to make sure that you keep your hands fairly protected in your face, because as you come close, even if the aggressor would throw a punch and kind of nick you over the head, something like this, it doesn't really matter. What you want is to be close to him. Then you can work your way around to either trap the arm or continue from here in a different manner. If, for example, if you just would keep your hands in front of your face, throw a kick and come in, this is not going to be very harmful because there's not much space for him to hit you with this. The idea is to eventually get to a hug position. One more time. One, two. Even when boxers in the middle of the fight, they find themselves in a situation of being in, in trouble. The main idea is to go for the thing. That's what they're going to go for. They feel safe here. That's why the referee has to come in and break the hold. Because from this point, it's going to be very difficult for another person to hit you from here. Even if he's at the state, it's hard to do much. So that's what you want. Get him in a hug tight. So kick, protect the stick, and get close. Throw the punch with his hand. One. Two, a different way to do it. So with that hand, you can go under and block the waist. It doesn't really matter how, but we want to get close to him. The hand should be able to protect your face from a fatal, or shall I say, a, a, a precise shot. That's what you want to avoid. One, two, three. That's the idea. A lot of people don't feel comfortable in closing that distance because they don't know what to do from that point on. We will now address some ways to take the opponent down once you get to the clinch. One, two. Once you get to this position here, my hand will trap his arm and hold him by the elbow because he could be without a shirt, so it gives me a better grip if I grab by the bone here on the elbow. The second hand is on the waist. My feet are planted in base like this. His leg is right inside of my leg. He can't kick me on the groin because I'm too close to him. And from this position, my back leg is going to step through in front of him my hip will step across, and as I put my head down, I'll flip the opponent this way. Once again, my please. Close this. So when the person throws a punch, and you got to this position here, remember this hand <clears throat> holds him from running away from you at this point. You want to stay close enough that he can't hit you with the groin, or with the knee on the groin. My head is stuck there so he doesn't hit me with the headbutt. From this position. The back leg is going to go around him. What makes the movement easy is that you make sure that this hand is not holding too tight because if it's very tight, it's going to get in your way. You won't be able to go around him. So at this point, this hand loosens up the grip so that your hip can come in and goes I'm very relaxed oh, in front of him here. It's not to muscle with the arm strength at this point, but instead your head goes down to your knee. Oh, my position is very relaxed. Uh, and from here he goes down this way. 
again. So it's one, two, trap the arm. Make sure that you trap the arm here, over his arm. Second hand, behind his waist. Head stuck down, leg goes in the front. The hip, very relaxed, goes in front of him. Some people have a tendency to step out and that throws me off balance. You don't have to put your foot outside of his leg. You can just put your feet, your foot right here. So both feet will be lined up with his foot like a square. One, two, three, four. Right there. From here, you bring your hip in. And my hip is what's gonna lift him up as I straighten my legs up. There's no arm strength on the movement. One, I'm relaxed. Oh, as I put my head down, and fly over. All right. Okay. Another way to take your opponent down when you go for something like this is that you're going to find yourself behind him. From here, by, because I'm holding him by the waist, it's going to be hard for me to step in front of him at this point. So what I want to do here is that I'm going to brace his foot and sit back with him and up on top of him at this point. So it's one, two. Hold my this. So now I'm going to stay close to him here. From here, he's got his center of gravity very low. I'm going to block his leg, sit back, and go with the flow at this point. Let's make sure that we notice that when I sit back, you don't want to land on your elbow. You want to roll over. So it's a kind of a very smooth motion. Oh. Oh, a natural fall this bring you here. And put your hands on the ground. Please watch once again. One, two. He's gonna struggle at this point. My leg goes behind him and I sit back. So that I can end up here. My hands on the ground. And I'm on top of the thing now. Once again, please. One, two. If I do this and I get close to the guy, he's struggling and ends up facing me like this, you could also, just by holding your wrist, bend him back and then go on top of the opponent like this. The idea of the clinch is to get close to him and take him to the ground. Once he gets to the ground, he's out of his environment. He's not a, no longer having a chance to punch and kick at you. So that's where he's dangerous at, at this distance, for the punch, for the kick. The moment that you get close to him now, he doesn't have the weight, he doesn't have the distance to be hitting anymore. He's too close. Okay. Now they struggle, they, everything else happened, but he doesn't have the powerful speed. He can't hit with the knee, I'm too close. Head, butt, I'm safe. The punch with his hand is too close. Hold here and you can bend him back as I said. Oh, it doesn't matter how he's going down. That's what we're going to. Whenever you throw the opponent on the ground, the purpose is to try to end up mounted on him. So one, two, from here he's resisting. Down we go. In base, you establish a position on top. One, two, we could stay here, or we could go to the mounted position, which should be your objective in a fight. Assuming that your opponent is heavier and stronger than you are, you don't want to keep the distance of a punching and kicking with him, because if he's more powerful, he could punch and kick harder at you. That's why we feel it's so important that you're able to close that distance effectively so that you don't give him a chance. He weighs 320 pounds, six foot eight. If I'm trying to punch him, he might have a chance one good punch and knock me out. So that's why I don't want to keep, stay at this distance with him. The safer for me is to stay close to the guy any way I can. Now even if you hit off my back, it's a different thing. That's how we're going. We're going to take him to the ground 
in and stay with him. So it's important that you feel that you must close that distance. As I said earlier, a lot of people don't feel like closing that distance because they don't know what to do once they get close to a much bigger and much more powerful opponent. But we're going to be seeing that soon enough. For now, I just want to emphasize that grabbing aspect of it, which is this closing of the distance. You are far away, so he can't touch you from this point. His hand can't reach me, and his foot can't touch me. Knowing that, he knows he has to get closer. That's when I come in with my move and grab him here. So the whole thing is I'm playing with the distance at this point. The hands can get me, but it, that's what you want. As I said, there are several different ways to close that distance, and this is just a basic uh, ways to do that. And more importantly is that you have to feel comfortable enough with the idea of going in for the clinch and just feeling confident on the idea. Even if you just do something like this, like the boxers, they don't kick or punch back, I mean, they don't kick back. But if you're just like this and the guy throws a punch, huh, now from here I can get close and then wrap the arm. Capitalize on the, on the distance factor that you stay close, he can't do much from here. One, two, four. One, two. How about from our hands? Two, you get in here. So once you get close, you can take him down this way. And then mount. That's one move. You can take him down this way. And then end up mounted. You could just simply bend him back like this and then end up mounted on top of him. Establish your mounted position, which is this one here. Or if he's pulling away from you, then I feel that I can't step in front because I would lose my balance. If, the, if your opponent at this point is dragging me that way, if I step here, he'll throw me off balance and I'll lose my movement. So, when I feel him pulling back, my back leg, and then I'll be mounted again. So from here, I go for the kick, block. If he's resisting that way, the back leg will hook his leg, put him on the ground, and then go to the mounted position. Once again, you guys. I want to tilt this way a little down there. One. Notice that the back leg here, when I hook his leg, I put my foot back on the ground. Because I don't want to hook his leg and land on my knee on the ground. So it's one. I'm 100% in base here. Then I place my knee over. We don't want to hook the leg and land on the knee because if you're doing it on cement, you could hurt yourself. So you have him trapped. You hook the leg. No good. Dangerous. Let go of his leg. Step over. And then mount. Once again, please. One, two. He's resisting, pulling back. I hook the leg, put my foot on the ground. I'm actually holding him if I want. I have that much base. And then go over for the mounted position. That's the objective in every situation of fight. You always want to end up in the mounted position. We will now review the same techniques that we just saw from a different angle so that you can have a more complete idea of what to do as we get to the clinch. So hoist will stand on this side, please. Okay, so we're in here. One, two, three. Remember that the hand should be loose. So as you step through, you have the mobility for the hip to come in. If you hold very tight with this hand, it's gonna make it difficult for your leg to go between you and your opponent. Loosen up the grip, the hand comes in, and then the hand now will readjust the man close to you. So when you put your hand down, you have absolute control on him go to the mountain afterwards. So the kick, 
to make him flinch. One, two, three. Got to hold it down. Step through. The hip comes in. Relax. Oh. As my head goes down, flies over. Always go to the mounted position. Get used to this. You want to feel comfortable with the idea of being close to your opponent. Another takedown is when he throws a punch with this hand. You deflect the hand and get close to him here. He might struggle at this point to just establish a base. And then when you brace his foot and sit back, that's where you're going to. And again, spread your hands so you end up in a mounted position. Please observe that in this position here, when you brace the person's foot, you don't want to pull him over your chest on top of you. That's not the idea. The idea is to bring him next to you, folding your arm in. That's what you want. So I'm not going to bring Hoist to land on top of me. I'm going to pull him next to me. So it's this way. Get close to this. Base around me. And I'm on the ground here. Then brace myself and end up on a mounted position once again. One, two. That's what I want. Just a little bit base. You can also go for the clinch here, and as the person straightens up the body, you hold your wrist and bend him back so that you can end up on top mounted. Be sure to let go of your hand behind his back so that you can protect your face as you go to the ground. Because if you keep holding the grip, you might end up hitting your head on the ground. Again, ending always on the mounted position. One, two, resisting. You can bend him back simply by folding him back by the waist, or you could hook the leg also if you want. And base stand up mounted on your opponent like this. Kick. The idea is to aim at the opponent's leg, right by knee height. If he moves back, your kick is going to be used as a step so that you can use that to close the distance. If he stay here, you're going to hurt him on the knee. So I'm doing this, two, and then holding the weight. Try to take him back this way. If he's moving back away from me, I might bring my hands underneath him and still bend him back with the leg and again end up on the top mounted position if he's walking back my leg will fish his leg with this hook and mount it again If I'm trying to go for this hip movement, and as I go for the hip, the man starts to walk away, I regain my position, establish my position, and try something else. So a quick recap on the whole sequence here. One, two. You can be over the arm or under the arm. Three, the hip, head down, head down. That's one way. Throws a punch with his hand, deflect the hand, come in here. Now, my leg goes behind.
just throws a punch with that hand. You can go under, hold it by the waist. From here, you can do this. And end up on top of him again. Position. Get to this position here. You can either just bend him back and end up on top of him. If he turns around, finds himself in this position. One, two, three, right here. End up with the guy in this position. Okay, now we're gonna see a sequence of these techniques that we just saw at pretty much full speed so that you can have an idea of the different options that you have to use the techniques that we have just, you know, explained to you. We have taken the opponent to the ground. Now we want to find, you know, good ways, effective ways to keep him down here. If you just stay like this on top of him, he could grab you by the chest like this and simply throw you out of here if I stay stiff as a board. So what you want is be able to, number one, relax so that you can avoid that. In other words, you don't want to give him a chance that you, there's no resistance. I don't want to be stiff that he can push me out. Instead, I'm going to relax my body and my arms are going to drive through inside of his arm. So he doesn't have a chance to develop the power of his move. I'm always going to be deflecting that. So he tries to push me out. I want to bring my hand through as if I'm swimming inside of his arm. This is the kind of motion you want. Like this. Always keep one hand on the ground. So as you're doing this, you have the base and the balance of using the ground in your advantage. That's the move you want. So for as a drill, you can go from here and just do this kind of movement. Just do this, that's what you want. Okay. If he tries to push you on your stomach here, you can stand up almost straight and then deflect the person's arm like this. It also works. You can use the palm of your hand or you can use the forearm to deflect his hand from pushing you back. This way, that's what you want. Okay, this way or this way. If he tries to work on your knee by pushing your knee down with his hand, without using the thumb, you reach for his wrist and just deflect or disarm the hand from pushing your knee away. That's the move you want. Other side, just bring the hand up. So that he, before he starts pushing, your hand is already anticipating that and disarming his hand or the elbow from being able to push your leg away. All I'm doing here is maintaining my position so that he doesn't have a chance to use his force to dislodge me from this position. That's what I want. Sometimes when the person is pushing you back, you could also come down and hold him by the neck like this and use this hand for base. My legs are gonna be spreading out like this and sometimes even hooking the leg on the back of his legs like that so that my feet can be holding on to this. Always relax. The idea is to get relaxed as you do the motion so that you can stay here without spending too much energy. If he decides to set up, sit up and push me back, you don't want to get stiff and be thrown off balance. You want to disarm the arm and pull, it, pull him back again. By leaning the body weight forward, bring him down and don't give him a chance to move you from this position. You know, the chest, just hook his neck back and drive him back. 
So it's one. That's what you got here. This is the kind of drill that you could be doing with the partner in a very relaxed manner to get used to the idea. What was pulling back? Other side. Base. Push the elbow here. The hand disarms the elbow. Yes. He could also think about turning at this point. You wouldn't want to leave your legs holding too tight because if your legs are too tight and when he rolls, it throws you off because your legs are so tight that you lose the position. What you want to do here is as soon as he starts to turn, open your leg a little bit so he will turn and you just let him turn and he stay underneath you. At the side, the same thing. So that you can always stay on top of him. But the legs should not be trapped underneath him. That's the move right here. So the hands pushing my chest, I will deflect, turning my body sideways slightly. As I do this, it makes it narrower to go inside of his arm. This move. He puts the hands on my side here. I deflect the hand this way so that I can stay on top. He wants to work on my knee. I'll disarm the hand. Same thing if he's using the elbow. I'll pull the elbow away so he can't use it. He sits up, I'll drive his neck back and rest my weight on his chest. I'll just lean the weight, relax forward. If he turns, I'll spread my hands and open my leg so he doesn't sit and roll over my leg. So that I can keep the position on top. Just kind of ride along with him, then deflect the hands. Always thinking about skipping your center of gravity here. If you start pushing him to the side, I want to hook his neck with one hand and drive the hand inside, just kind of hooking him behind his neck. Push to the other side, the hand goes behind. Oh. Then work your way here. Use him for support. Grab onto him, use the center of gravity. My weight is here. My knees do not necessarily have to move all the way up always or stay all the way down either i kind of i want to ride the opponent i want to kind of adapt to whatever is necessary as if i'm riding a wave i want to just if he pushes that way i'm going to be relaxed bring my arms inside my idea is to be very loose that's what i want there's no resistance i just want to kind of ride along disarm the hand The hands are whatever feels comfortable for you. The idea is to deflect the movement so that it can't use the power against you. There's no resistance. Drive the weight back. Relax the weight. Just kind of take your time. Wait for him. Let him get tired. In a real fight situation, the opponent is going to get so excited and so nervous about being down there that he's going to try to muscle his way out. You should be able to capitalize on that by letting him spend his energy trying to muscle you out and you just ride along and wait because he'll lose it to himself. He's gonna be so exhausted at that point that he don't have anything left. So if you just can take your time and wait and ride a little bit, he's gonna get exhausted, he's gonna get very tired. And by that point, you should be able to apply some finishing holes that will do good for you. We'll now give you an example and summarize the techniques that we saw in this tape.
As you practice these takedowns, please remember to be protective of your partner. This concludes tape number one. On tape number two, I will show you how to deal with the mounted position. In this segment, I will show you how to escape from the mounted position. This is the mounted position. I'm mounted on hoist. It happens to be the worst position for a person to be in a fight is down here. And the reason is I'm out of reach from his punches and he's within reach of my punches. So for that reason, it's not good to be able to stay here. We have to find a sensible way to get out of this position. Again, assuming that your opponent is bigger, heavier, and stronger than you, if you simply try to push him out, he's going to brace himself and it's going to be difficult to get him out of here. So, this is what you want to do. You want to keep initially both elbows on the ground so that the elbows will limit my knees at this point and I cannot move my body forward than this. So the elbows will hold me at this position. When you keep your elbows here, holding my knees at this position, I will be sitting on your hip. Okay, your hands, one is going to grab like this by the wrist. You want to make sure not to use your thumb at this point. There's no thumb. You want to grab simply like this and glue it on your chest. With the other hand, if I have a jacket, you grab the jacket. If I don't, you can grab the arm right here, either one. So once you have the arm trapped and the arm blocked with this hand, it's, it's impossible for a person to put the hand from this position on the ground. So if I try to move my hand to the ground, I just can't do it anymore. It's really nice. oh, I can lift you up, but the hand will not go to the ground. Remember, if you just wanted to push the person out, he is going to brace himself with this, and it's going to be virtually impossible to get him out of here. So what you're doing is that you want to trap the arm this way. The hand confirms the arm being held in with this position. And your foot is going to trap my foot. Like that, from the outside. Foot traps my leg just like that. Okay? So the arm strap, back of the arm here is strapped, and the foot is holding my leg. With all my right side blocked like this, what you want to do is slowly lift your hips straight up. Okay, because I don't have the hand to brace myself, I will fall off. Once again, please. The same technique will apply if the person is trying to hold you by the neck like this, strangle your neck, you get his wrist, second hand comes in here, always keeping your elbow inside of my leg, trap the foot to the same side of the arm trap, so everything is on the same side is blocked so that I can no longer reach out with my hand and prevent myself from falling. And as you lift your hip up, my hand is blocked and I'm out. Other side would be the same thing. Hold the wrist, block the arm, keeping the elbow in here, lock the foot. And as you lift your hip slowly straight up, I don't have the hand, and I'll do the down. If the opponent slides the knees up here under your arm, he puts himself away from your hip. So if you would lift your hip up now, it no longer moves me forward. If I'm sitting back, and you lift your hip up, it throws my weight forward. If I'm here and you lift your hip up, I don't lose my balance anymore. So it's important that you keep your elbows here for that reason. As I said, if I am able to sneak up my knees in here and you lose the possibility of lifting me up with your hip, you would then squirm up a little bit this way, regain the position with your elbows inside of my legs. Now, trap the arm, both hands, lock my foot on that side which is the same side of the leg and then lift your hip up and roll the mouse. Other side please, hoist. Hold the arm this way. Lock the foot. 
Lift your hips straight up, and I don't have the hand, and I'm out. If the person on top keeps the arms spread out this way, okay, instead of trying to grab you on the neck or hold you by the jacket, if he keeps his hand on the ground like this, you could also reach out over the arm and wrap the arm this way. So now my arm is stuck in here. Hand again holding by the, the bony part of the arm here by the elbow so that you have a good grip. Lock the foot on that side so that we have good control on that foot. This hand here, you could simply block my arm this way, okay? And then as you lift the hip straight up, my arm again is blocked and out he goes. The idea is to block one side completely because if you just try to push the person out, he is going to brace himself instinctively by bracing, spreading the hands on the ground. So if you know that he needs that kind of base and you can trap one arm, he doesn't know what that means. He's only going to realize what that means after you lift your hip up. Lift your hip up. Boys. I can't have the free hand anymore and I'm up. So if he keeps the hand spread out like this, you can reach out over the arm, trapping my arm. Remember that when you practice this with a partner, be sure to close your fingers at this point so when he lifts me out, you don't leave your fingers bending backwards. So close your hand like a fist so as the person on the bottom lifts you up for practice. Yes, you don't hurt your hand. Okay. If the person's got the arm across the neck and he's squeezing your neck, the idea is the same, is to trap the arm, control the elbow here, behind the elbow, lock the foot on the same side, always the same side, the arm and the leg on the same side to make sure that I cannot step out or brace myself with the foot or the hand on that side. So as Hoist lifts the hip straight up here, my arm is blocked, and I'm gone. Other side please, trap the arm. Lock the foot on that side. There you go. It's always the same side. And then lift the hip straight up. My arm is blocked. And it's gone. When you roll the person out, the idea is not just stick a date out with you, huh? The idea, lock your foot, please. The idea is not to stay down, please. Lift your hip up. You don't want to just throw him out and stay here. Because from this position, he could come back up again. The plan is when you trap the arm, is like you lift your hip up and you keep going with him. In other words, your body will drive him all the way out. Move up a little bit. The idea here is that you lift your hip up and then you drive him out. That's what you want. Trap the arm, lift your hip up, lock the foot on the same side, lift your hip up, and instead of just throw him out with the bouncing movement of the hip, you want to lift your hip up and roll out so that you land on your knees afterwards. That's the plan. So if I'm grabbing his neck, he'll confirm the movement, trap the arm, hold the wrist, lift the hip up, and he goes with me. Right, to ensure that he lands on his knees afterwards. If the person on top has the arm wrapped around your neck like this, the hand will come around, trap my arm with your head back so that I can't push my arm out, pull my arm out of this. So the head helps to trap my arm along with the hand. The hand on this side here will wedge my hip so that he has an extra support with that hand. The foot on that leg traps my foot on that side. And as he lifts the hip up, I'm stuck the same way, I'm out. Right, okay. He's got your neck here, confirm his grip. Make sure to use your head back so my arm doesn't get out of here. Doesn't come out from underneath your head. Wedge the hip with the hand like this on the hip bone. Lock the foot on that side. And lift your hip up. Yes, and out goes to this kind of move. holding tight it doesn't matter trap the wrist lock the arm 
The movement should not be with the hip throwing me to the side. You don't want to roll the guy that way. That's not what you want. Make sure that when you trap my arm like this and lock my foot, lift your hip straight forward. That's the move you want. Then he rolls out. Okay. You have the leverage when you lift your hip straight forward. You don't want to roll him to the side. Once again, please. From this, lock the arm so that my knee won't move up. Lock the foot on the same side. And as you lift your hip up, uh, impossible to stop. Right, make sure that you always end up on your knees afterwards. The person is holding you by the wrist. You could confirm his grip. Even if you can't use this hand holding my arm, it's all right because I'm almost committing to the move as I grab your wrist. If the guy is so much stronger, so much more powerful that you can't move a finger at this point, take advantage of the fact that he's holding your wrist, lock your foot, because if I don't put my hand on the ground, I'm going to lose my balance. So even if I would hold your hands like this, lift your hips straight up, the fact that I don't use my hands throws me off balance. Again, please. If you can't confirm this so that you don't be at my mercy in letting go of the hand, so you don't leave it up to my decision to let go of your wrist and brace myself, it would be even better if you can make sure of this. So now if I decide to let go of your wrist and brace myself, I can't because my arm is trapped. So from this position, we lock the foot again, trap the wrist, confirming my grip. As you lift your hip straight up, my hand is trapped, and I'm going. If the person were to grab your arms or something like this, here we go again, second hand goes under. Oh, it's all, the idea is to trap one side. If you can prevent my hand from spreading the base uh, and, and saving myself from falling, I'm out of here. So the trick is to hold the arm, keep the elbow closed so my arm is stuck, get, get out. Now lock the foot and as you lift your hips straight up, I don't have a hand anymore. That's what gets me out. Remember, only lock the foot on the same side. On the same side of the hand. So if you're trapping this arm and locking this foot, you don't want to have this foot locked also. Because if you lift your hip now, that back leg of mine could hook onto the leg. So if you're here and you have the arm trapped and the leg trapped and you lift your hip straight up, my other leg could save my balance, could prevent me from falling. So you want to make sure to not let, yes, not trap the foot on one side. So you hold here, lift your hip straight up. I don't have the arm, and I'm gone. Okay. So the person is trying to strangle or bracing himself. If my hands are kind of far away, you could reach for that and bring my hand towards you here. Trap in the arm and lift your hip up. Yes. Okay. If he's so strong that you can't bring his hand in, you move towards his hand. It works too. Trap the arm this way. Lock the foot. Lift your hip straight up. And he's out. Other side. Once you grab the arm, you can't get the hand out. Lock one foot only, lift your hips straight up. Yes. Always end up on your knees. Okay. Squeeze your neck. Trap the arm. Lift your hips slowly, straight up. And he's out. As you practice these techniques with your friend, you will see that soon enough, as soon as you start feeling comfortable with the escape, your friend is going to start making things more difficult for you. Go ahead, hoist. With this kind of thing. He now is going to start getting smarter. So as you do that, he might try to untangle the foot to brace himself from falling that way. 
which is going to take us to the next way out, which is the elbow skate. Okay. Oh, let's lock your foot, please. All right. So if I'm here, and the person now makes a point of untangling the foot, when Hoyt straps my foot, if I start doing this number so he can't catch my leg, okay, we're going to do the elbow skate, which is when your elbow goes under my leg, from here, bring your knee underneath my leg, hook my leg with your foot, put both hands on this knee, slide your hip away, and bring the legs around to put me in the guard. Once again, please. Hold. That's all. If the person is here, he's got the legs spread out so that you can't catch his foot, he's doing one of these, you can put your elbow here, or you can help, help with the hand. Usually it's called, the elbow is the first thing to start, so we call it the elbow skip because his elbow is already in this position. So the elbow brace is here, right, then you put your hand on the knee like this, move your head back so that you can put your hand on my knee like this, and slide your hip back so that the bottom leg comes under, Hook my leg, hands on the other knee, scoot your hip away, and bring the leg out, crossing the legs behind my back on the end. Once again. So the elbow escape is like an emergency exit. It's an extremely, way, extremely effective way to get out from this position, and it's almost impossible to prevent that from happening. Okay, from this position here, if I'm preventing Hoyt from trapping my arm, keeping my base very spread out, he can go for the elbow escape by putting the elbow and then the hand. Turns his body sideways. Instead of pushing my knee with his hands, the hip is what moves back. My knees is staying on the same position. The knee, the, his body is what's going to slide away. Then he puts the hand on the knee, brings the bottom leg out, catches my foot, slides the hip back the other way to bring the knee under to then cross the legs behind my back. Okay. I wanna, I wanna show you a drill here that's gonna make it easier. Okay. The idea is from this position here, laying down, you wanna keep your foot planted on the ground and your shoulder on the ground so that you can swivel your hip under. That's the move. So that when you go for the elbow escape, you put your elbow on the person's knee and the hand, use your foot on the ground and this leg flat on the ground so that you can slide your hip away. Bring your knee inside his leg, hook it, hand on the other knee, plant this foot on the ground and slide your hip away. Bring the leg out and cross your legs on the end. Once again, so from here, the elbows are on the ground next to the person's knees. It's one, like this, one, get the leg out, two, Get the leg out. What makes it easy to, to move my hip is that I have my weight, my hip off the ground. My hip is off the ground. I'm putting the weight on the foot and my hip swivels underneath. Uh, so it goes under and out. And under and out. That's the move. So that's a very good drill from laying down position like this. Elbow on the ground and scoot your hip away. Elbow on the ground, scoot your hip away, and eventually cross your legs. Please. So if the person is here, for the elbow escape, if I have my base spread out, you use your elbow, bring the leg out, and hook my leg. Stop for a sec. If you don't hook the leg, the person on top will have a chance to mount again. So you want to make sure that you trap my leg so that I'm stuck with this. I can't get my leg out. Hand on the knee, back up the hip. Second leg comes under. And always cross your legs on the end of the move. Once again, let's back up. So if I'm here, move this wedge your elbow on the knee. Slide your hip away, get the leg out and trap my foot. The hip is what moves. You don't want to push the person's knee away. Instead of pushing, 
a heavy person knee away from you, let the knee be there and just slide your body away from him. One more time, please. If I'm in this position, that's the move. I'm staying, my knees will stay planted on the ground. His body is what moves away. Okay. So if the person is here, that's the move. Elbow on the knee, sideways, get the leg out, hook my leg, get the leg out, and then always cross your feet on the end. Make sure that you cross your legs to force the person in my position here to get locked inside of your legs. Okay, we'll now do a recap on the sequence that we've seen. Okay, if the person is going to have you by the neck, trap the arm, keep your elbow in, locking the foot, and lift your hips straight up. Okay. Other side, trap the arm, lock the foot, the hip goes straight up. In here. Okay. <clears throat> As you can see, in this way to escape, when Hoist traps my arm like this and locks the foot, he is on the bottom position right now, and as he locks the foot and lifts the hip straight up, he is now on top. Okay. And then we talked about the other way to skate, which is the elbow skate, in which he wedges the elbow on my knee. Instead of pushing my knee, he moves his body away, brings the leg out, traps my foot, hand on this knee, bring the leg out, and then cross the leg. The fact that I end up on top of him, apparently on top of him, does not necessarily mean that I'm in an advantageous position. The fact that I'm inside of his legs, it's a very good advantageous and classic defensive position for Hoist at this point. So don't think that just because I'm on top means that I'm winning the fight. That's not necessarily it. Okay, let's go back to this again, please. So here, I am on top because I'm sitting on his chest. Here, I am inside of his leg. It's a whole different ball game. Okay, once again. Huh? So from this position here, he wants to trap the arm, lock the foot. I can't get my arm out. As he lifts the hip straight up, I'm, he gets up. Okay. If I have my hand under his neck, he confirms the grip with that hand. The head goes back so I can't get my arm out. Wedge the hand on the hip. Locks the foot on that side because it's the same side of the arm that is strapped. And as he lifts the hip straight up, I'm out. If I spread my hands like this, he then can put the hand on my knee. He can use the hand with the arm straight like this. Or if my knees are too high, he puts the elbow because it's a better wedge. Elbow with that arm and the hand on this knee. Turn the body sideways. Get the leg out. Lock the foot. Scoot the hip away. And cross the leg. Let me remind you that the person that knows Gracie Jiu Jitsu is always with the advantage. So as you probably notice at this point, when Hoist traps my arm here and locks my foot to lift me up, he now is on top of me here and can take advantage of this position. When Hoist does the elbow escape and gets out like that, I am now inside of his legs or on his guard. And if I don't know what to do, it's, it's bad news for me. So, because he knows the techniques of Gracie Jiu Jitsu, even though he's on the bottom, he still can capitalize on that. So the fact that he's on the bottom doesn't necessarily mean he's losing, or the fact that he's with the legs in this position, because he knows what he wants, he still can get me out and be on top and capitalize on this position also. Okay. Let me also include in this sequence that when he's doing, he traps the arm, locks his foot. If I step out, he can change from one movement to the other. He hooks my leg. 
if as he's trying to do the elbow escape, or sliding the hip away, I put my weight on top of him, he can now go ahead, roll the guy over to the other side and end up on top of him here. So he starts by trapping my arm, lifting the hip up. I block the move. He defends that. As he scoots the hip away to put me on the other, I catch him here. He now rolls the person to the other side. And he's on top of me. Technique should be repeated at this speed, very relaxed, effortlessly. And that's one way out. I spread my base, he does the elbow ski, bring the leg under, traps my foot, cross the leg, yes. Locks the foot, I step out, traps my leg. If I put the weight on top of him, he can just feel the weight going and over we go. Mount the leg, yes. Okay. Change it from one skate to the other skate. Hand on the knee and cross the legs. If you can, flip him out so that you can go on top of him. If there's a chance, you always want to do this skate first. Okay. Only if the opponent resists or prevents you from doing that, then you change the move. Put your hand on the knee and put him inside of your legs. You are no longer with him on that worst position, with the mounted position. You're already out of that. We have him inside of your legs now. It's better to have him here than have him here on top of you. So for the person on the bottom, you prefer to have him inside of your legs, okay? If you're gonna be on the bottom, you wanna have him inside of your legs. If you can, trap the arm, lift him up, and get him out completely, even better. Okay. So if the person is here and grabs your neck and you trap the arm and he now does this, he changes. Uh, as I hold on to his neck, he feels the weight uh, changes to this. If he decides to grab onto you doing this kind of thing like this, you want to untangle your foot, take advantage of this hook that I have, hold my arm, wedge my hip, and then lift your hip up, because if this leg is free, I lose control in the position. If I spread my legs very much, you might also want to do the elbow skate by using that hand on my knee, untangling your leg, skate from underneath, hook my leg, put him on your guard by bringing this leg under, and now you're out. Same thing, please. Do this, bring your leg under. If I resist and hold on tight, take advantage of his weight. Lift the hip up, right, leg goes in, locks the foot. If when you're doing this, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up. he does to escape with the arm, and as he tries to put me inside of his leg, I hold on to him. Go ahead, smooth your hip away more. 
and I'm too heavy. He can always go to my back. To end up on top anyway. So if I'm here, or squeezing his neck, he locks my arm, traps my foot, lifts the hip, I step out, he does this move, moves the hip away. If I stay real low to the ground, where he cannot flip me over because I'm too heavy, he just climbs over my back and ends up on top of me here. Your goal in a fight is to end up in this position. As we talked about, I'm out of reach of his punches, and I can reach it with my punch. Plus, gravity is on my side. I have much more power hitting him going down than he would have trying to reach up at me. But not only for the hips, because there's more techniques to do in a fight than just, in a fight, than just trying to punch somebody. It's a much safer position to be in. So if you're on the bottom, you want to walk I mean, through these techniques, you want to rehearse these techniques enough times at this speed that we're doing so that you can be very comfortable with the, with the movements. Remember to feel for the balance. Repeat the techniques and they will become reflexive action. This concludes tape number two. On tape number three, I will show you how to pass the guard. When your opponent is lying down and has his legs around your waist, he has you on his guard, which is a classic defensive position and the topic of this next tape. This is the guard position when the person has the legs wrapped around your waist. Uh, if you have to be on the bottom, you want to have the opponent inside of your legs like this. Just for the record, if you're inside a person's leg and the legs are not crossed, if it's just like this, you could simply walk over the legs and find yourself on the mounted position, which is the most advantageous for you. However, if the person does cross the legs and keeps the legs snug or tight around your waist, you can't just push him down. So what we're going to see now is how to escape from the legs wrapped around the waist. And the first thing you want to do here is to put one hand on the person's bicep like this, on your opponent's bicep, and then put your leg up. Okay? When you put your leg up, it's gonna, a gap is going to happen inside of his leg. So I put my leg up and my hand can now turn, I turn my body slightly sideways so that my hand can go under and I will wiggle my shoulder underneath his leg, all the way under the shoulder. From this point, my hand will reach out and grab the cloth. If he has a jacket, I'll grab the jacket. If he doesn't, I'll just hold over the shoulder. The idea is the, the weight of the leg is being carried by my body not by my arm. I will grab the cloth, shift the position of my legs, putting the back leg up and the front knee down on the ground. And from here, I want to drive his knee towards his head this way so that I can then put the elbow on the ground and then let my weight come across the side, establishing my position at this point. So the leg goes up, I'm in this position, hold the arm, put the leg up, find myself in base so that he cannot just push me to the side and throw me off balance. So I'm going to spread my legs, center my balance at this point, leg up, the hand, turn my body sideways, bring the hand inside of the leg, right on the curve of the knee, that's what you want to work on, right here. Right. Lower my shoulder so that the shoulder is underneath the knee. If the person keeps the legs crossed like this, as I grab the cloth and as I drive the weight to his head, the knee goes to his head, I shift the leg so that I have better support with the back leg. And as I bring the weight to his head, it gets so uncomfortable, the pressure on his back gets so uncomfortable as I bend his spine that way that he has to open the leg. Then I'll plant the elbow on the ground and then stabilize my position across the side like this. So 
so fall in this person's leg. If the legs are not crossed, I'll just walk over. One, two, and set. If it does cross the legs, I will put the leg up, thinking of my balance, no rush, hold the arm. This hand goes inside of the leg, inside of the leg. I will lower my shoulder. Sometimes I will use my knee to wedge his leg here so that he can't go down while I'll slide my shoulder. So my knee is actually helping to put his leg up on my shoulder. Actually, my knee is helping. When I grab to this position here, I'll drive the weight forward until he opens the leg. Then I'll establish my base here and relax this way or this way. Let's take your time. Do the same thing on the other side here. Leg up. My hand goes inside of the leg. Don't muscle with the arm. Be sure to lower the shoulder so that my arm is not using the stress to pass the, the guard from escape from between his legs. The weight is all on my shoulder, not on my arm. The arm is very relaxed. As I get up here, I shift the legs so that the natural position now makes the weight lean towards his head. Get a hold of the grip on the cloth here and let the body weight come down, elbow on the ground, and then establish the position across the side here. One more time, please. So from here, hold one arm, leg up, the hand goes inside of the leg, lower my shoulder, I'm using my knee to help that knee up my shoulder here. The arm is relaxed. Reach for the collar. If, I don't, if he doesn't have a collar, I'll just find his shoulder, shift the legs, and drive his knee towards his head to a point that he can't hold it anymore. He opens the legs. I'll slide the body weight down, put my elbow on the ground, and establish my position here. At this point, if the person wants to push me out or muscle me out of here, all I want to do is just ride and establish my base. There's no rush. I can just stay here, let him wear himself out, and just kind of ride along for a little bit. From this position here, once he tries to push me out, and I allow myself the time to resist that, I'm going to push his knees away. In case he has a leg on my way here, I'll just clear it out of the way, and then mount to get what I want to be, which is the mounted position, which is the ultimate position for me in a fight. If I'm here, trap the arm, leg up, hand on the same side, goes inside of the leg, lower my shoulder, the hand now finds the collar, Turn the legs around, drive the weight to his neck until he gets so unbearable he has to open the leg. Then I'll put my elbow on the ground and step in my position here. He tries to push me out. I'm just going to use my hands to establish my base or put this hand on this side, on the back of his hip, like this. Then eventually change the position of the legs, push his leg out of the way and mount, back on the mounted position. So, as you see, the person can be on the bottom here, he could be doing a lot of different, you know, chokes and different attacks and different arm locks and things on that line. Right now, I'm looking from the point of view from the person in my position who knows what's, what, he, what he's doing. I mean, the person in my position here is the one that does know Gracie Jiu Jitsu. If the layman on the bottom, all the thing he's doing now is keeping the legs crossed and finding a way to technically avoid that. So that's the idea when you find, you know, when you find yourself in somebody else's legs is to hold one arm, 
leg up. He doesn't know what to do here. He's just holding with the leg. I bring my hand inside of the leg, lower the shoulder, go around, go to the chest, the legs, and establish my position here to mount and keep this kind of base. That's what I want. From here, I'll push his knees out of the way and mount the leg. One of the things that will occur as you're practicing these movements is sometimes your partner is going to hold the leg very tight. He's going to hold mm -hmm. tight and you're going to find that to bring this hand inside of the leg gets uh, very difficult to bring the hand in. So you're going to have to, you're going to find yourself having to use strength on the arm, which is not what you want. Remember that the idea behind all the techniques that we're seeing is to find an easy way to execute and, and accomplish the position that you're looking for. If it takes strength, something is not quite right. So you put your leg up, turn your body, hold the leg tight please. I'm going to turn my body sideways so that the groove, so that the groove of his legs will go like this, will get out of sync from my hip. Right now he's got a perfect fit with the curve of the knee around my waist. But when I put my leg up and turn my body sideways, a little gap happens right here on the knee. So I'm going to bring my hand on the bend of the knee, hold the leg tight, and he's holding my leg, my, my waist very tight. Hard for me to bring my hand in. I will bring my knee back down to the ground. I'll put my hand on the ground and he's holding tight with the legs. But my hand stays on the ground as I move my body away his, his knee slides towards my shoulder and I didn't have to push my hand in but instead I move my body back from this position here this hand can feed the cross to this hand shift the leg again driving the weight to his neck until he opens the leg elbow on the ground and lift the body weight across the side establishing my position and then sometimes this hand goes to this side so that this leg does not go underneath my body. I'm blocking his arm. I mean his leg with my arm. Push the knee away and mount the leg. <clears throat> so if the person is holding the leg very tight, you want to put the leg up and turn your body sideways so it, get, it escapes from that little fit, I mean the tight fit that you have on the joint of the hip against the weight. When I turn my body, a little gap happens right here on the bend of the knee. Hand will go in. This much is okay. From here on, it's going to be difficult if he's holding very tight. My hand is going to be kind of tight to lower yeah. And I can't. I cannot bring my knee under to help his knee to slide up. It gets very tight, very difficult. So you put your knee back on the ground and rest your hand on the ground. Be sure that you don't drive your hand in. It takes a lot of effort to do that. Keep your hand on the ground. Keep your hand on the ground and move your body back. Slide away from it so that the knee automatically comes up to my shoulder. My hand didn't push in, I just stayed with the hand, I moved my body away, but now his leg is here. The fact that he's holding on tight with his own leg makes the knee come up to my shoulder. The hand grabs the cloth, feed it to the other hand, walk around. I drive the knee to his head so that he has to uncross the legs. When he opens the leg, my elbow goes on the ground let go of his legs. I'm always relaxed. Establish my position here on top of him. Bring the hand back if it needs be. If he tries to push me to the other side, to the other side, I can use my hands. The trick is to rest the weight on top of the person here and be very relaxed. Be sure that your weight is centered on his chest so that the whole body is real loose and he feels the maximum weight. The hand controls from this side to this side. And turn in case his legs are on your way you clear the legs out of the way and then the foot goes over to bring you back to the mounted position one 
hand goes in. Two. He's holding tight. My knee goes to the ground. Hand on the ground. Be sure that you don't work with this on his thigh. It's harder to force his leg open here. Your arm should be on the bend of the knee, right on this area. That's where you want to do the entrance of the arm. Not inside of the person's thigh here. Leg up, turn your body sideways. The hand goes on the bend of the knee. Stay at the bend of the knee. Hand on the ground, knee on the ground. His legs are holding tight. As I walk around him, my hand didn't push. My shoulder was lowered so that the leg I brought up to my shoulder. Feed the cross to the other side. Lift the back leg because that makes my weight tilt forward. I'm relaxed, very relaxed. He's pushing me back with the leg, but there's just a weight. Uh, my own body weight is going to make him feel uncomfortable. He opens the leg. Very relaxed at all times. Establish your base here. Push the knees away and bring the leg over to the mounted position. That's, that's the goal, so get to the mounted position. So for a little recap, trap the arm, put the leg up, and the hand will go inside of the leg. Remember to find a comfortable position to bring your arm inside. Lower the shoulder, the arm is relaxed, grab the collar, walk around, let the weight slide down, and rest the weight on top of the opponent. That's what you want. After you establish your position here for a little bit, push his legs out of the way, and mount this way. Sometimes when you're getting ready to pass the guard, and you do this move or bring your hand inside, the opponent could just open the leg like this. If he opens the leg and lowers the leg, you could just simply walk over his leg like that, push this leg out of the way, and be mounted. That would work. So I'm here, put the leg up. As I'm trying to go this way to pass the guard, he opens the leg. I can just walk over his leg and mount. Or I could be doing this. As I get lower to pass the guard here, he opens that leg and lifts his leg kind of high. So it's okay to let go of this arm, bring it inside of his leg, and totally change sides on him. Oh establish your base this way sideways we sit push the leg out of the way and back on the mounted position one more time please so as you put the leg up to pass the guard and the hand goes inside as I get ready to lower my shoulders he might uncross the legs and leave the other leg kind of high. My hand will go underneath it, across the side. I'm here. Establish my position. Push the legs out of the way and back on the mounted position. this, hold the arm, leg up, the hand is going inside, he holds the leg very tight, I can't get it put my knee on the ground, hand on the ground, as I walk around and get to this, he opens the leg on the other side, my hand can go under and do this, lay across the side, clear the legs out of the way, and mount. Hold the arm, leg up. The hand goes inside. Turn your body sideways. Lower the shoulder. If he opens the leg and leaves the leg very low, it's okay to just walk over. If the leg is low, it's okay to just step over with your knee here. One, two, three, 
Hey, Ma. In other words, the plan is to escape from inside of his legs and mount on him. When the opponent is holding tight and keeping you close and holding the legs very tight and, and moving all the balance, <clears throat> plus attacking your neck with chokes and things on that line, the option is to grab the cloth or hold the arms if he doesn't have a cloth and stand up. One leg, two legs. From this position now, I am out of reach from the arm lock, from the arms for the choking me from this position. So what you want to do is that you want to grab both collars with the same hand. When he uncrosses the legs, my knees will squeeze his legs in so that his knees are squeezed in and the feet are pointing out like that. So that my hand can go inside of his leg, lower my shoulder in, grab the cloth, and walk around, leaning across the side, pushing his knee away, and bringing the leg over. When you get up, and you grab the cloth here, how about that? You want to get comfortable with the idea of holding this so that he doesn't grab your feet with his hands and pushes you back. So it's like I'm riding here. My knees are bent. I'm holding the collar and I'm going to keep myself, if need be, pulling forward. Pull myself forward so he doesn't push me back. I'm going to keep this position. If he keeps the leg cross, my hand will go inside of his leg. I'll put my hand on the knee and then I'll pry his leg open. Trap the knee with this, grab the cloth, walk around, and let my body weight rest on top of him. Elbow on the ground, establish my base here. This hand again can be on this side, or if need be, we move it to the other side so that we prevent this leg from going underneath me. Okay, my arm is on the ground, flat hand on the ground, under the leg. So I can turn sideways, push the legs out of the way, and mount the leg. Once again then, grab the collar, put the leg up, stand up here. If you are in a comfortable base, look. The weight is on the legs of my hip. I'm not muscling him. I'm in a comfortable stance here that the person can easily grab onto me here. I'm out of reach, he can't choke me. I got the collar with one hand. That's the move. The legs will come in and snug his legs this way. So if he grabs my feet and tries to push me back, I have the hands to support myself from falling back. And this hand will fly back. Grab the cloth. I wanna keep this snug so that I can come down with this and keep the weight close to him. Establish my position, change the legs, push it away, and mount the leg. Good luck. <clears throat> Here, one, two. Heads up, out of reach from him. That's the move. From here, the hand will go inside the leg on my knee, pry the leg up, trap the leg. This is helping here to trap his leg with my head is also controlling his knee. From here, I walk around, go around, elbow on the ground, establish my position on the side, turn the knee, move the legs out of the way into the mounted position.
here, in here. He opens the legs to try to push me back with the knee, but I'm riding along here. My knees are flat, so I'm mobile. I grab the grip on the collar. The knees are squeezing in. Everything is controlled this. This hand goes behind. Keep it tight. Grab the cloth. Knee goes down. Keep it tight. Elbow on the ground. Establish my position. The hand pushes the legs out of the way. And mount the leg. Back in the mounted position. Two. One, two. If the person is holding me very tight and it's got a good grip on me here, you could lift him up and hit him on the ground. It's a very dangerous move for the person on the bottom to lift him up and bang, hit him on the ground. So the defense for the person on the bottom would be to uncross the legs because when he uncrosses the legs, I can no longer pick him up. He's too heavy on the ground now. So now that he uncrossed the legs, I have the grip on the cloth. The hand goes back. Grab the cloth. Walk around. Down. Establish my position. Push the knees away. And mount the legs. here, grab the cloth, one, two, if the person drops the knee very low, you can just put your knee over, elbow on the ground, push the other knee away, and you're in the mounted position, so I got up, he does this move, lowering the knee very much, my knee is already here, all I got to do is put the knee on the ground, take advantage of that. Elbow on the ground, play the weight across the side, stay very, establish your position here. Then this hand pushes the knee away, and mount. On the other side, the same thing. I got up, he lowers his knee. I don't want his foot to go in my hip, huh? We don't want to give him a chance to do that. So when I'm here and he lowers the knee, my elbow will prevent that leg from getting established here. My elbow will hold him off until my knee has a chance to slide over, elbow on the ground, drop the weight, establish your base here, push his knee away, and mount the leg. Like we did on the ground, sometimes when you get ready to pass the guard this way, and you're going for this, he might want to open up the other leg. You can go under, grab the cloth, and change sides on him. Base, push him away, and mount the leg. From here, get up. I'm getting ready to pass the guard here. And when I get to there, he starts opening the other leg. My hand can go under his arm. I'm sorry, my hand goes under the leg. Go across, and then across the side. Establish the position, and mount the leg. Remember that you should follow these sequences slowly and repeat as many times as possible because getting used to do the techniques relaxed gets the mechanics, you know, you get the habit of getting the mechanics up down. And that's what you want over and over so that you can be very comfortable with this kind of calm sequence, with the calm repetition. That's what's going to develop in you, the reflex. So as you increase the speed of the movement, because you've done it so many times, it's going to become easier for you to execute the moves. Now we're going to do a, a, 
a sample of the same movement a little faster so that you can have an idea of the alternatives that you might develop as you do that. So first I'm going to pass the guard on my knees. Huh? From here. Now using the option of standing up. Remember to relax and take advantage of your body weight and gravity. This concludes tape number three. On tape number four, I will show you how to escape from headlocks. Headlock is not the most technical way to win a fight. However, for those who lack better technique, it's probably one of the most widely used finishing holds. Don't worry, I'll show you some great escapes now. The first thing you want to do is avoid getting your chest crushed by the other person on the headlock in this position. So to avoid that, you want to turn your body sideways like this. Okay? So now when I hold the neck, my weight is no longer resting on top of your chest. So that's the first thing we do. Then you're going to tuck your chin in so that if I squeeze with the arms, I'm no longer on the neck part, but I'm on the jawbone at this point. Right here. The arm, the elbow is going to stay here with the arm standing up, and the other hand goes to this kind of thing. That's the move we want to make this kind of frame. With this kind of frame, even if I were to rest all my weight here, you could be able to support my weight. So that's what we're going for. Once again, high speed. So when I get close to the neck, slide your shoulder back and turn your body sideways with this frame the more i try to pull towards the person's neck the more it's going to hurt my neck okay so that's the move right here once this is established you want to slide your hip away from me push my head back and bring the top leg over the neck so that you can cross your feet and squeeze the legs person gets close to you, you want to turn sideways and immediately set this frame up. The elbow should be resting on the ground here. He can't force it down because of the leverage that you have the, as a result of this frame. That's what you're looking for right here. Steady frame. It's a good idea to put the blade of the wrist against my neck so that the more I push down, the more it hurts my neck at this point holding the neck you slide your hip away I lose the support on my back and the top leg goes over cross your feet and squeeze the neck right. cut the hip the neck goes over and cross your feet
Put the neck back up your head. Yes. At this point, it's important that you realize that the bottom leg should not be caught under my shoulder. Make sure that the legs are one on each side of my neck. Let me just review this real quick. So we go to this move here, elbow on the ground, back up your hip, push the leg back, and the legs trap around the neck. Okay, let me do this on the other side. Here. So sideways, take a frame down here, slide your hip away, push my head back, and the legs will catch around the neck so that you can straighten the leg and squeeze the neck. And then squeeze the neck. If the person holds on to your neck and you bring the blade of the arm in front of my neck, making this kind of frame, but he is really strong and he holds your neck very tight, and then you move your hip away, bring my head back, but he doesn't let go of your neck, he keeps holding on. Okay, you're gonna follow him this way. Turn this way here. He's still holding on to your neck. You now mount the leg over and end up in this position with the hand spread on the ground so that he can't throw you out of here. That's the move you want. Okay, if I, if the aggressor grabs your neck here, you slide your hip away, push my head back, the leg goes over. He doesn't let go of your neck. Make sure that you use your hands on the ground for balance. The hand should be able to move around. The leg goes over. He still got you on the neck. Your hands are spread out so that he can't throw you out of this. Okay. Let me do this one. First, you get your head locked like this. You make a frame with your arm. You cut your hip, bring your leg over. He doesn't let go. You use your hands for base. What on the line? Right here, so that he can't throw you out. Take your time, bring the leg over. Spread your hands on the ground so that you're established here. Right, that's the move you want. So that your hands on the ground will prevent him from throwing you out and end up in a mounted position like this. Even if the person were to keep their head down, if you hold your wrist and grind his face, it's very uncomfortable my neck, so you'll probably be able to create this space. Then you slide your shoulder away, move your hip back, Push my head back, the leg goes over, cross your feet, and squeeze the neck. Again, it's holding tight, grind the hand. It's very important the grinding on the hand of the blade of the arm into my neck. So that the more I push down, the more it hurts my neck. Very uncomfortable for me in this position. Scoot your hip away, push the head back. Use your hands for balance. Mount the leg, base with your hands on the ground, and you are back in the mounted position. If the person, after a while, become aware of the what movement that you might want to do they might keep their head down tuck in real low like this which is going to make it difficult for the hand to come in here so if i keep my head tucked in very low very tight it's hard for you to do this move so your hand no longer has the space to come inside so what you want to do at this point is bring the leg over and hook the leg here 
close with the groin with your foot, just like this. Move with your mind. Okay, like that. Okay, from this move. From here, the back leg, using this leg, you don't want to pull me back over that way. That's not the idea. It would be too heavy to pull the opponent over that side. What you want to do is just leave your foot here and use this hook as a support so that you can go with your knee up on the other side and end up on top of me at this point, spreading your hands on the ground and rolling the person to this position. So if he's got your neck and a headlock and he tucks his head down real snug, really tight, you hook the leg, roll over him, untangle that foot, right, hands on the ground, leg up and sit back make sure to sit back because if you lift your hip too high at this point you might lose your balance forward you want to put the weight down and spread your hands in base so that he can't throw you out of here or forward When you get to that top position, you want to make sure to establish your position. There's no rush. He's not going anywhere. So once you get on top of him, take your time. Establish your position. Ride the guy for a little bit. Then we're going to go into the next move. But for now, I just want to get the feel for the balance. That's what you want. You got the neck, holding the wrist, keeping the head down, holding tight. You hook the leg, climb onto your knees, use your hands for base. Always think about using your hands, put the weight down so that he can't move around. That's what you want. You want to be able to establish your position here. So that your hands are controlling and he can't get out. Okay. Got you here on the back. Hold your back. Keep your head down. You hook the leg. Climb up, untangle the foot, leg up, base, right, and then the blade, see, okay, all right, once again. Ideally, take up for a second, ideally, as you practice the move, you don't want to wait for the person to grab your neck and then try to escape from here. This is a fight system. So as I get close to you, you should start turning now. Go. So by the time I get here, you're already ready for the opponent. Huh? In other words, don't trust the person to come up to you, even in practice. When you say, okay, let me grab your neck. One sec. Don't let him grab your neck, your neck like this and start squeezing. And then you try to escape from now, from this position. No good. So what you want to do is get developed, uh, develop the habit of start turning right now at this point. So when the person gets here, you're already halfway out of it. Tuck your chin in, your head is protected, your neck is protected. I'm holding tight here, but the leg will come in. Roll over, untangle the foot, establish your base here, sit back, so that he can't throw you forward. The arms are spread out, this arm and this arm. Move up like this, so that even if he tries to jump now, all you want to do is ride along for a little bit. If he lets go and face you, you're mounted. Okay. He could grab your neck, tuck the head down, and when you hook that leg and start climbing over my back, he keeps his legs like this and try to resist. But now the weight of your shoulder will force my arm back. Hold the wrist and complete with a twist on the arm. Okay. Once again, please. <clears throat> if the guy grabs if the opponent grabs your neck and holds you here, you hook the leg, climb up, use your hands for base, always, so that he can't push you back that way. The weight of your shoulder goes towards my neck, forcing my arm open, and then cranking the arm back this way. So, 
painful move, so be careful with each other's shoulder at this point. One, hook it in, base. The weight should be on my neck with your shoulder. All right, okay. Other side, please. Hold the neck, he hooks the leg, climbs up. I'm trying to resist not to be turned over. So now the weight on my neck and then crack the arm up this way. <coughs> crack the leg, climb up. Yeah. The weight on the shoulder, uh, on the arm, and then come up to the arm. Okay. So if the person is here and is grabbing like this, you make that frame, the elbow on the ground, scoot your hip away from me, push my head back, cross the leg, and squeeze the neck. If, once again, please, if the same thing happens like this, well, slide your hip, push my head back. If I don't let go of the headlock, you come up, Step over, spread your hands in base, and you're on the top position, the mounted position. I wanna, I wanna make a note of a point here. That when we are in this position, and hoist, hook the leg. I'm sorry. Make a note of this. When, when you're in this position, and hoist brings the hand around the neck, to do this, and scoot the hip away. Push my head back. The leg goes over. And I insist in holding this. One second. The aggressor is gonna be so worried about holding your neck that you can pretty much take advantage of that. Notice how easy it is for Hoist to move me around. See, he can put the guy wherever he wants. He's so tight on the neck that you wanna use that. You can move the guy around and then position him to wherever you want because all he's thinking about is hold on to the neck. He's just, everything he's got is on the neck. So if you can be uh, cool-minded enough about it, you can use your, push your hands on the ground and carry the person wherever you want. I mean, you can just do whatever you, he's holding tight to the neck, you can capitalize on that. Right, and establish your position here, always thinking about your balance so that you don't lose the position at this point. So take advantage of the fact that the person at this position holding onto your neck, you can move him around, you can carry him wherever you want. Okay. And yes, the headlock can be a painful movement. The person squeezing your neck, it can hurt. But if you tuck your chin in and protect your head down like this, even though you're feeling the pressure, it's not going to be as painful as it would be if you're not aware of that, if you did not know how to protect your neck. So it's very important that we develop the habit of as soon as a person gets close to you, immediately you want to turn it sideways. So if I could, I'd say for you to now on, you know, stay, sleep with your elbows here so that you can use this as a guideline to hold me at this distance. And anytime somebody gets close to you, that's what you want to do. Develop the habit of protecting your neck immediately. So it, by the time they get here, you are halfway safe in this position. Then the hand goes across the neck, but I tuck my head down too close. You can no longer put your hand through here. Then we hook the leg. Right. Climb over. Right. Hands on the ground. And again, he can move me around anywhere he wants. It's easy for him to capitalize on that. Because I'm just holding so tight on the neck, he can carry the opponent anywhere he wants. Okay. Another variation for the headlock is when the person's got your neck like this. And now, he knows that you might try this. He keeps the head down against this one. So you can't bring your hand through here. He, might, he knows you might try that. So he tucks his knees under and he goes like this to his knees. So his knees are very, you know, tucked in and the head is like a little ball. He's all wrapped up in here. In this case, what you want to do is that you want to go to your knees. Right like that. Put your hand on the ground back there. Hold my shoulder with this hand. And now as you sit back, you roll the person back over like this. 
Again, Hoist carries me around wherever he wants. Mount the leg. And he's got absolute control on the position again. So I can't throw him out, out of this. So we've got him on the headlock on the side like this. And to prevent the blade across the neck, I'm tucking my head down real low. To prevent the hook on my leg, I'm tucking my knees in. So he goes to his knees, holds my shoulder with one hand, kind of hugging towards him, puts the other hand on the ground, and now he sits back, carrying him like a ball to the other side, shooting the leg over, spreading the hands on the ground in base, and again, easy to maneuver the person to whichever side he wants. Now, if I let go, he would simply be mounted again on the mounted position. Okay. my head down and protect my knee so that you can't hook the legs. That's where I'm at. You can't hook the legs. Can't push my head up. Goes to his knees, hold my shoulder. As he sits back, I'm like a little ball, easy to lose my balance. Right here, and in this position, mount the leg over, spreading the hands on the ground so that he's got total control of the person here again. Another variation for the headlock is when a person has your neck in this position and he tucks the head down to prevent the hand from coming across the neck here. He'll tuck the leg in so you can't hook his leg. And as you hold the shoulder and go to your knee, he will step back with his leg to prevent you from flipping him that way. In this case, you step over the legs Put your hands on the ground and capitalize on the fact that he's holding on to your neck. But you can now step over and end up in this position. At this point, I should make a note that even though I had him on the headlock, the fight is not over yet. That's going to lead us to another situation where you're going to be able to capitalize on this. Okay? So the fact that I had him on the headlock, he's no longer on the same. Uh, dangerous position where he was before. He's now in a much more advantageous situation. Okay. So if I had him on a headlock at this point, I keep my head down and tuck my knee in. So he can't hook the leg or brace my neck away. He holds my shoulder, goes to the knee, puts the hand on the ground, rolls me back, and I prevent that by stepping back. Now he's going to step over, hands on the ground, and walk back. So that from here, he can step over and use the hands to brace himself. Again, I am got him by the neck, but he'll be getting out of this very soon. One. That's it. Elbow on the ground. Back up the hip away from me. Push the head back. Leg over. Cross the feet. And squeeze the neck. Once again, please. Place the ground. Back up the hip. If I don't let go, you follow me. Mount the leg, spread the hands on the ground, always thinking about your base. The number one thing is to maintain your base so that I can't throw you out of here. Very important to be relaxed and with your hands mobile so you can always put them wherever you need to for base. That's the main thing at this point, just to maintain the position. Let the person on the bottom try to get you up, but he can't. Let him wear himself out with that. I hold the neck and tuck my head down so that the hand can't come in. You hook the leg, go to your knee. Use your hands for base. And up, rolling back to this side. Remember that if the person at this point would just let go and turn, you'd be mounted. 
if let him push. If from this position he decides to let go and turn, let him turn. It's still on top of him. If I hold the neck and keep my head down, when you hook the leg, I keep my base spread out so that you can't come up. He goes to the knee and dives the shoulder on my neck right here. It's very uncomfortable. And as he looks away, my arm, you have to let go of the grip and then complete the arm lock. Cranking the arm back. If I got the neck and keep my head tucked down and the legs tucked in, he hold the shoulder. Roll the person back and go to this position where he can mount the leg, sit back, establish his base on the ground, always with the hand ready to protect himself from falling off. Hook the leg, I spread my base. If I keep my head tucked in and he climbs over and as he's about to roll me back, go. I step back, he just steps over, hands on the ground, rolls me back and mount the leg so that he can now again comfortably ride the position from here. If you ever find yourself with a person holding on to your neck, and as you turn sideways, he is really putting a lot of weight that way, take advantage of that and mount. Right there. In other words, as you escape from these headlocks, mostly you want to feel the balance. You want to see where the opponent's weight is resting. If he's got your neck here and you can feel his weight is all here, it's going to be easier for you to climb up. Right, again. Yeah. If he's got the weight too much forward here on your neck, easy to hook that leg and climb up that way. Go over his arm or the arm this way at the back. If he's got here and putting the weight over it, you can just feel the weight. Oh, it's going in. And then mount the leg, always ending up in base with the leg mounted and the arm spread out so that he can't throw you out of this. I can't, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to always allow yourself a second to establish a base. This is very important, especially because the opponent not knowing what to do. He's going to be jumping. He's going to be trying to struggle and muscle his way out. If you tighten up and tense up and try to use strength against him, it's easier for you to lose your balance at that point. But if you can be relaxed and just observe what he's doing and take your time, establish your base, you have a much better chance to succeed in all these techniques. Not only that, but also the fact that he's going to wear himself out a lot quicker because he's spending all this energy while you're just resting and riding along with him. So that's what you you must keep in mind as you're practicing with your partner. And also be careful that when you're practicing, it's good that you pretty much allow each other to, to do execute the technique so that you don't hurt each other's neck and that kind of thing very much. So when you get a partner to work with this, you know, in these movements, hold the neck, but hold the neck not to crack his neck and, you know, hurt too much, but just to hold the neck so that he has a chance to feel the position, to get used to, to get accustomed to how to escape from that kind of hold. And, uh, because you have a little more strength on your arms than he has on the neck. So you just want to hold, kind of relax, you know, so because you want to make it easy for him to learn. And then when you reverse the position, it will do the same thing to you. It's not worth trying to resist and tighten up too much in the beginning so that you don't have your neck hurt and you have to spend some time without practicing these techniques. Huh? You want to get the most out of this. So the hand is here on the neck like this. Tuck your head in. So that if you can't do one, you're going to find you're always going to be an opening to do something else. So, for example, if I'm holding his neck like this and my leg is preventing from... Oh, there's another chance right here. Then he squeezes the hip away, the leg comes over. If I insist on this, he just immediately goes for the next move. Always capitalizing on whatever is available. That's what you want to do. 
Then from here he would mount the leg. If my leg is on his way, he clears the leg out of the way and mounts. Always thinking about the base at all times. To establish the base. Remember, we'll be getting out of this one here real soon. Okay. Head is up, he tries this. If I change, he changes. If I bring my leg in and tuck in, he can go to his knee, hold my shoulder, pull me back. I change, he comes over. Walks back. Push the knee out of the way and mount the leg, establishing the base. If I let go and turn, he can stay with me here. We're now going to see these techniques applied at regular speed. Remember to go easy on your partner's neck. This concludes tape number four. On tape number five, I'll show you various applications of arm locks and chokes. What we have covered so far will enable you to learn, and more importantly, how to apply some effective finishing holds. In this next segment, I will show you some basic applications of various arm locks and chokes. Initially, when you find yourself mounted on the opponent at this point, you can have his arm like this, elbow on the ground, and with the hand you go under, hold your own arm, or shall I say, hold your own wrist, and then lift the elbow up and drag the hand down. So from here, you drive his wrist down to the ground, the second hand goes under, hold your wrist, and drag it down. You want to keep your elbow next to his ear and be sure not to use your thumb. No thumb. So you grab like this, elbow down here. This hand will go under and then from here lift the elbow up and like a paintbrush you should slide his hand down towards your knee. One, two, three, and as you lift the elbow up just drag the hand down. Two, and then drag down this way. If a person is trying to muscle you out of here and is just pushing you out like this, you could also put your both hands on his chest, rest in the weight on the chest to do this move. The trick of the position is that your arms are the pivoting point and should hold all your body weight. That's what you want. From here, with the hand on the chest, you're gonna jump up, spin the leg around, and go to the arm lock to lift your hip up, and then break the arm this way. So from here, you put your hands on your chest, you bring your hand outside of his arm, and the other hand inside the arm. The arm that's gonna get broken should be inside of your two arms. So if you wanna catch this arm in the army lock, you go this way. If you wanna get this arm, you'd go this way. Put the weight in the chest, jump up, spin the leg around, and from here, lift your hip up. Next time you're gonna do it without stopping with my foot on the ground. So as I jump up, it's one continuous motion. Control the wrist so he cannot turn the hand. Glue the hand on the chest. And as I lift my hip up, it will hyperextend the elbow. Okay. 
the weight should be on his chest, locking your elbows straight. As you hop up, the leg on the same side of the arm will glide over his head. Go to this position and then break the eye. So we have this one, hand goes under and hold the wrist. Keep his hand touching the ground, lift the elbow up and slide the hand down. Hold the wrist, keep the elbow next to his ear, bring the hand under, hold your wrist, keep the hand touching the ground, lift the elbow up and drag it down. If he's trying to push you out, yes, bring you up like this, both hands on the chest, jump up, bring the leg around and then lift your hip up. Other side, please, one more time. So here, put the hands on the chest. When you jump up, keep the weight on your hand, so that holds your weight over. And then for the arm lock. The wrist, lock it, lift the elbow up, and drag it down. If I'm going for something like this and he tries to push me away, I'm setting him up for the arm lock. And then lift the hip up. Another application for something like this is when the person's got me on a headlock. He got me on a headlock. Then I hook my leg. Climb over. Well, uh, and I find myself in this position that we have ended up the other previous set, set up. From this position, after using my hands to establish my base, even though he's still heavy on the headlock, I'm on top of him in a mounted position and with my base comfortably set at this position. My hand will go in front of his neck, hold my wrist, and lean the weight to make him let go. As he let go, my shoulder and my head will pinch his arm in place. I'll put my hand trapping his arm, other hand on the ground, and pivoting on this hand, I will bring the leg over for this kind of angle. No, on the other side, please. The person's got me on the headlock here. As I hook the leg, climb up, use my hands on the ground for base. Here, he's still holding my neck and trying to push me up, but I'm in good base. Number one is to keep your balance. Once I have this established and I'm sitting down, my weight, my center of gravity is lower here. I know he can't throw me out. I let him jump for a little bit so he gets tired from this position. Then the arm goes across the neck. Be sure to put the blade of the arm against the soft part of the neck. Not on the head, but right here, next to the neck. Bring your hand, hold your wrist, and make that same steady frame that we had on the ground. Lean the weight, not to this side, that way. From here, trap his arm, hand on the ground. You might want to bring your knee up a little bit because sometimes if the knee is too far back, it's going to be more difficult to bring the leg around. Whereas if you have your here and you bring your knee up, it's easier. It's a, it's a shorter uh, trajectory to cover from this point. From here, weight on the hand, spin the leg around. The arm is trapped at all times and easy to break at this point. If when he does this move, he tucks the leg in, keeps the head down, go to my knee, rolling back, here, clear the leg out of the way, mount the leg, always taking my time, there's no rush, he's not going to escape from here. If he would let go of my neck, I'll be mounting on top of him like this. 
so I'll be all right. If he does remain holding my neck like that, I want to take my time, establish my position, and then bring the hand in front of the neck, the other hand. Be aware at this point that instead of putting the frame on the neck and lifting your head up, which brings a lot of force and makes it very heavy on your neck, because if I try to lift my head up, I'm using the stress of the back of my neck against his arm. So if he holds tight, it gets heavy on my neck. Don't pull your head up at this point. Instead, make a frame with the arm and lean the weight forward so that the pressure is transferred to his neck. Instead of you having to lift your head up, do this, dive into his neck until he lets go. Then you trap the arm, your hand is already here, the leg is right behind his head, and you're back into this to break. If when he's here, we make the frame, scoot my hip away, I bring my leg over, but he does not let go of my neck. I go to this position, in base, bring the blade across the neck, he lets go, grab the arm, and back into the animal lock we go again. Besides the arm locks that you have just seen, we can also apply a finishing hold if the person on the bottom has you in this position, which is, by the way, a common finishing for headlocks. You might find yourself in this position after escaping from a headlock. So from this point, you want to make sure to establish your position here with your hands on the ground and your weight leaning back. Bring the hand across the neck. Lean a steady frame, not to lift your head up, be sure that you lean the weight forward, grind the neck, put your hand on the ground, trap his arm. With the weight here, bring the leg over the head and complete with the arm lock. So the other side please, you got the neck, brace yourself with your hands, sit back, hold the weight down here so he can't push you off. The blade goes across the neck, hold the wrist, knee behind the head, lean the weight forward, trap his arm, hand on the ground, and bring the leg over to do this. Then lift your hands. If you find yourself with the person holding on to your neck, like this, holding on to your neck, and when you do this move, always be ready to let go of it. Number one is your base, so sit back, find yourself comfortable with this. If you find yourself with the weight on the neck, and as the person lets go, if you feel that your leg is not limber enough to come inside of his head this way here, because actually what you're doing is that you're bringing the leg above his head, it would be okay to put your hand right on the person's head. Here, you will require that your leg comes up real high. If you put your hand on the person's head, it gives a little more height to bring the leg over. It might make it easier. So if the person got you in a headlock like this, establish your base, no rush. As you go for the movement, always be ready to let go. Number one thing is to be relaxed and ready to ride the position, no rush. The blade goes across the neck. Trap this. If you ever find difficult to bring difficulty in bringing this leg over the person's head because he's too wide, you know, he's got the head too way too high, put your hand right on the head, use this as a support, and bring the leg around to then complete with the lifting of the hip to break the arm. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Another common finishing hold is when the person is inside of your leg like this. Okay, you're gonna hold the wrist with one hand, the other hand goes over and cross your legs, the hand goes over, hold your wrist like this. So it's one, two, one, 
shoes, both my feet on the ground. With the weight on my feet to push me back and a good grip on my wrist, I don't want to push his hand back that way. Instead, I want to use my legs and drive my weight back with it. Bringing his face to the ground. I will use this foot on the ground to slide my hip away from him. And then with the hand, keeping his arm against my chest so that he doesn't have the mobility to move this away, I'll keep it glued on my chest and keep this arm in an L position here. Drive his hand that away. From here, one, grab the wrist, feet on the ground, lean back, slide your hip away, and you could even either trap his foot with his leg or bring your leg over his back, either one. The arm glues his arm against my chest and this hand will drive his hand straight up that way. Hold the wrist, sit up and hold your wrist. From here, both feet on the ground, lean the weight back, keep his arm squeeze against your chest, scoot your hip away and drive his arm. Important that you don't bring your, his hand this way, that's not what you want. You want to bring the hand in an L position this way. That way, that's where you're going. You have the wrist and crank it that way. From here, legs should be always crossed. I'm gonna sit up, hold the wrist. And cross my feet, put your foot on the ground, drive my weight back, bringing his face to the ground. With this foot on the ground, I'll slide my hip away put the leg over here and glue his arm to my chest with my arm here. Then this hand will push it forward. You want to feel the snugness of, this arm against, of his arm against your chest. When you do this move and the person defends by holding behind your back like this, that you can no longer catch him on the arm lock, you bring your hand around his neck and find under his body, grab your wrist right here. That's what I'm doing. I'm going around the neck and I'm grabbing my own wrist. Under the neck and I'm grabbing the wrist. So I go around the neck, grab my wrist. From here, I will lay back, cross my legs. And with the legs, I'll push him away as I bring my hand towards my neck. Okay. So the movement is to go around the neck, hold the wrist like this, legs crossed, and stretch the person away. The blade of the arm should be right on his throat right here. So I go for the unlock. To block the unlock, my hand will go around the neck. Notice that I'm sitting up as I do that. I don't want to be laying down and trying to catch his neck. I'm sitting up here. Very comfortable. Wrap around the neck. This hand goes in the front of his shoulder like this, so this way, not under his arm. Be sure that you go inside of the shoulder, this way. And be careful that he doesn't tuck the chin in. You want to be underneath his chin. Don't let him settle for this. Go under the chin. Go grab here, the second hand goes like this, grab the wrist, so that the blade of the arm is right on the person's throat. Go inside, underneath the wrist, hold your wrist at this point, bring the hand up as if you are kind of adjusting the tightness around the neck. As you lay back, cross your legs. And with your legs around his waist, you will push him away, stretching his neck. Go for the angle lock, he blocks it, holds around your waist. Sit up, the hand goes around the neck, under the neck. At this point, I'm already adjusting the neck. This hand 
goes inside of the arm, in front of his arm. I hold my wrist this way, not this way. This way is what you want. Bring it up to adjust around his throat. As you lay back, cross your feet. Bring your hands to your chin. My hands are actually pulling up as the legs push him away. By doing traction to his neck. That's what you're going for. So from this position here, you can go either for the other lock and sit up and cross the legs. Lean back. Scoot your hip away and break the arm. Feet on the ground. Lean back. Scoot your hip away and then crank the arm up. Or you could go for this. If he resists, you wrap his neck, adjust it up at this point. You want to get this, this snug movement around the neck. The snugger the better, real tight. The second hand goes under, holds your own wrist. As you lean back, cross the legs, and the legs shall push him away as your arms keep the pressure. Here, he defends the movement. My hand goes around the neck, the hand goes inside, hold the wrist, bring it up as if you're almost hanging him by the neck, cross your legs, lean back, and push him away. Okay. Lay down, please. <clears throat> This move, bring it down this way. This one. This one tries to push me back, hands on his chest, and then the unlock goes from here. Or if the person has you in a headlock like this, establish your position, bring the blade across the neck, drive the neck in. Now you're going to see those finishing holds from when Hoist was inside of my guard from another angle. Here, I'm going to hold the wrist, sit up, and cross the legs. Use my feet on the ground so I can lean back with the weight, scoot my hip away, leg over and force the arm that way. Hold the wrist, sit up, and cross my legs, rest my feet on the ground so that I can use my feet for support. So as I drive my shoulder back to the ground, I'll scoot my hip away, bring the leg over, and then crank the arm that way. From here, if he resists by holding his wrist behind my back, as I go for the hand lock, I'll sit up, wrap around his neck, the hand will go in through here, I'm holding my own wrist, I go around the neck, into the wrist, adjust the movement up way into the throat like this with the blade of the arm. As I lay back, I'll cross my legs and then push him away with the legs and pull the hand up. So I go for the angle lock. Locks like this. My hand will go around the neck. This hand will go from the inside, holding my own wrist. Take the slack out of it. Way up. Adjust into the throat. Lay back. Cross my legs. And then as I push him away with the legs, Tighten up his neck. Okay. When you find yourself inside the person's guard, as you pass the guard doing this, going under, lowering your shoulder, go across the side, lay across the side, and establish this position here. It is a good opportunity for you to do this move. Hold the arm, second hand goes under, hold your own wrist, lift the elbow up, and slide his hand down. 
from here, your hand is down here, second hand goes under, lift the elbow up and slide the hand down. So come across this side here, hold his wrist, glue the hand to the ground and keep your elbow next to his ear so it fits here. This hand goes under, holds your wrist, lift his elbow up and slide the hand down. So from here, hold the wrist, the hand goes under and from this position. Another finishing hold that you can do from this position, it's very common at this situation when the person on the bottom tries to push you out. And as a result of that, they will lift their head off the ground. As they lift their head up off the ground, you should put your head on the ground and with your hands off the ground, wrap around his neck. Around the neck. Turn your body sideways. With this leg, you step over. With this hand, hold your own wrist. Rest the weight on his neck. Take this slack out of the grip. Make it really snug. And then arch back. And on the side like this. He tries to muscle me and lifts the head up. It's a very common move to be used in a street fight. Everybody lifts the head up. This hand will go around the neck, underneath my body, with my head on the ground, so that I can use this hand. This hand holds my own wrist. Notice that I position my body sideways, so that I can bring my foot over. This is the position I'm in. There's no weight on my arms that I can't move it. I have my head on the ground, my knee on the ground, my foot on the ground so that everything here can be moved very easily there's a lot of space between him and me so as i go around here look there's oh my arms can be everywhere a very comfortable position my hand goes under be sure to adjust his neck let the weight rest on the side of his body like this and my body sideways and then from here Adjust the arm around the neck and then arch back with the whole body. Just make illustrate this thing for a second here. That if the person is laying down here and I'm across the side, it should be like a bridge like this. So when my hand goes around the neck, you hold your own wrist. That's what you're looking for. So the hand goes around the neck and you hold your wrist. Around the neck and hold. That's what I'm doing underneath my body at this point. So from here, I go around the neck, I hold my own wrist, adjust the neck, step over, and not with the arm strength, but with the whole body, is what gives me the length for the squeeze. It's not the arms pulling as it is the body arching back. So he's laying aside like this, laying down, and with my elbow on the ground, I'll put, I feel the person lifting up the head, I'll put my head on the ground, I'll bring my hand around and under my body so that this hand now holds my own wrist, turn the body sideways, step the leg over, and with the body, I will arch back. Please, please. In a movement like this, it's important that you feel that the movement, when you go around the neck, you get it really snug around the person's neck. Because if it's a little bit loose, there will be slack and the circulation will be happening on the neck. You want to make sure to go around the neck and with your arm, keep it very adjusted. So every little bit of arching of your back will take a big effect on the person's neck. will increase the pressure tremendously. So from here, the person lifts the head up. The hand goes around. Put my head on the ground. The hand goes around the neck. I hold my own, my own wrist. Turn my body sideways, step over with the leg, rest my weight on his neck at this point so that I can be very 
Tough is very snug with him. And then when I arch back, it's with the whole body, it's not the hand. Give me one more kind on this side here, please. From here, I notice the person lifting the head up. I put my hand on the ground, go around, turn the body sideways, hold my wrist, step over, and then the whole body arches back. the head down. He pushes me up, hand on the chest. As I hop up, the weight stays on my hand. Be sure to keep your weight on your hand. He's pushing me up. The weight is on my hand. This is my pivoting point. I keep the weight on my hand so that the legs feel very light. If the person grabs me neck, catch by the neck, Establish my base here, bring the arm, dig it in, hand on the ground, trap his arm, move around, bring the arm lock. Other side, base number one, always relax, take your time here, lay it across the neck, lean in, trap the arm, put your hand on the head if you need be, and spin the leg around. Then lift your hip up. If the person is inside of your guard like this, you want to go for the wrist. If he's holding your arm like this, bring your hand under. Just as a means of oh, letting go of the grip. So if the person's got your arm, just go like this. Hold the wrist. Sit up and grab your own wrist. Feet on the ground. Drive your weight back. Scoot your hip away and bring the arm straight forward. If I go for the heavy lock and he blocks my waist, I'll wrap his neck, my hand goes inside, lay back, push him away with the legs, at the same time that I pull my arm up. I'm locking here, hold the wrist, scoot my hip away, drive the arm up, if I go this way, he resists, my hand goes around the neck, other hand goes in here, push him away, and squeeze the neck. We're now going to see the application of these finishing holds at regular speed. There you go. This concludes tape number five. There are many more techniques of Gracie Jiu Jitsu that I have not yet addressed. For now, I advise you to go back to the beginning of this series and repeat these techniques many times. Remember, do it in a relaxed manner. Have fun with it. These are some of the techniques we used in the Gracie Jiu Jitsu self-defense program.